morning students so today we have to discuss regarding another one invertebrates that is one of this very familiar animal that is cockroach right and its scientific name is periplaneta americana periplaneta americana right and let us discuss, discuss regarding its gender features and periplaneta they said it is one of this cosmopolitan in nature cosmopolitan in nature which means cosmopolitan in nature which means it is available in everywhere in every countries it will be available so how it could available in everywhere in the sense you know it is omnivorous in habit omnivorous means it, it could eat every kind of this you know uh, food so that's why they said it's a omnivorous type so that's why it could survive in everywhere right and another one they said the body is covered by one chitinous exoskeleton chitinous exoskeleton so because of that also they said it could tolerate this heat and even it does cold also that's what it, it, it will be available in everywhere right okay and they said the habitat wherever it is located you know it is available in everywhere we can say even it is available in this you know home especially in the kitchen or supermarket or schools or stationaries and even in the sewage so everywhere it will be available right so since you know it is it is available in everywhere it once it may go to the sewage or it may once it may go to this another one you know dumped places there may be the lot of bacteria or microbes will be there so it used to carry this microbes or bacteria from one place to another one place and it may directly come to this you know eatable things right so what will happen because of this it will carry the lot of pathogens which is causing the diseases right especially this is typhoid and a diarrhea cholera tuberculosis so these are the diseases which is transferred because of this you know cockroach that's why this it is one of the better also it is one of this better understand okay so it may be it will be asked as one of the question what are the diseases may be transfer or why you know the cockroach is called as one of the vector okay they, they may ask right okay now let us go for this and the morphology so hope you know what is morphology so the study of external features of an animal is called morphology right okay so let us go for this morphology if we see this morphological features right and this uh, externally we can say there is and the length of this cockroach is 2 to 4 cm in length 2 to 4 cm in length and 1 cm in width and it is dorso ventrally compressed to this what do you mean dorso ventrally compressed this is a you know dorsal part this is ventral region right so dorsal side ventral side so it is compressed dorso ventrally compressed okay then if you see the color it is a reddish brown or reddish blackish in color reddish either reddish brown or reddish blackish in color right okay and it is one of the segmented bo body am i right and bilaterally symmetrical what do you mean bilaterally symmetrical the body will be divided into two equal halves by only one plane is called bilateral symmetry so these are all the general features we can see and let us see this morphological features so this total body as divided into three divisions the total body is divided into three divisions among this the first one is this hydrogen right so the first one is this hydrogen so the head consists of what are the parts? The head consists of what are the regions, right? So let us see this head part region. So is a, the head consists of the first one, of course, what you can say? Compound eyes. Compound eye. So head consists of compound eye. And there is this antenna. Antenna. Then it consists of this mouth, right? So the head consists of compound eye, antenna, as well as the mouth, which is present in this, you could see in this ventral region, right? Okay. So the first we can see about this compound eye. So compound eye, so the head part consists of this large compound, large compound eye. So why it is known as a compound eye? Because it is not a single eye like ours. It consists even in a one single eye, there is this lot of small eyes will be there. All things is composed together. So that's why they say this is compound eye right okay and the next one is this antenna so the pair of antenna you say long antenna you say and this is one of the sensible one this is used to do you know observe this environmental changes you know temperature and all those things so it is a sensible antenna you say pair of antenna you say right and the third one is this mouth 
so it consists of this and mouth and the mouth they say it is one of this and uh, uh, segmented type so if you see this mouth so this is the part i have drawn for this mouth here so the mouth consists of listen it is it is for biting and chewing type they say so the mouth is uh, apt for suitable for biting as well as for chewing so this is the mouth part i have drawn separately here so the mouth consists of what are the segments listen so the mouth consists of one labrum the first segment is called labrum right a labrum and it consists of pair of maxilla so this two region is called maxilla right and it consists of pair of mandible pair of mandible then this lower segment one of the segment is called labia labia and the center it consists of hypopharynx hypopharynx otherwise it is known as a tongue right so so this this consists of the segmental arrangements so all these segment together it form as a one mouth this is suitable for biting as well as for chewing okay and this is one of the hyponatus type they say the mouth is one of this hypo hyponatus type so hyponatus so hyponatus type so which means so the mouth is you know uh, facing towards this downward position so if this is a cockroach the mouth is located in this downward position that type of this mouth is known as as hyponatus type hyponatus understand okay so that's all about this head region have we got so head consists of compound eye antenna as well as this mouth do you understand and let us go for this next division so the head region the first is part is this head region second one is this thoracic region thoracic thoracic region right so this thoracic region consists of three segments three segments so listen so the first three segment is called thoracic region have you got okay so that's why this thoracic region is classified into three types that is prothorax prothorax mesothorax prothorax mesothorax as well as metathorax metathorax right so this is a three divisions three segments of this thoracic region so we can mark here so this is the prothorax mesothorax metathorax right so this is a three thoracic divisions okay then one more thing there is a, what is this, what is the speciality of this thoracic region they can see so from this thoracic region three pairs of walking legs is there is walking legs so when it is walking this legs will be visible right so from this thoracic region three pairs of three pairs of thoracic legs leg is arising so that's why so this is and uh, since three set is a three plus three six right so here three here three so that's why they say this is hexapoda type hexapoda hexapoda means hexa means six since six legs of the they say it is hexapoda or uh, animals right and these three legs lizard it is arising from so if one from each uh, you know segment one pair used to arise have we got so first segment one pair second segment one pair and the third segment another one pair okay and this segment consists of five each each leg consists of again five segments each leg consists of again five segments so the first segment is called coxa the first segment is called coxa and the second segment is called trochanter trochan trochanter okay trochanter and third segment is femur and the fourth segment is tibia and the fifth segment is tarsus right so our limb also we could say it is femur tibia and fibula will be there right the same here five segment is there femur tibia fibula we used to say for the leg okay and the same here coxa and trochanter femur tibia tarsus this is a five you know uh, segments of this each each legs right then the fifth leg fifth segment tarsus consists of this five digits again five digits like this five digits so this digit is called as podomius or tarsomius podomius podomius or it is known as a tarsomius have you got so that's about this leg apparatus right 
and we can come for the another one arrangement here in this uh, thoracic region. So from this thoracic region, pair of wings is to rise. Pair of wings. Two pair of wings. Two pair of wings are there. So this is arising from this and uh, mesothorax as well as this metathoracic region. Mesothorax and metathoracic region. So first wing, the first wing which is, so one side I have drawn these legs and another one side I have drawn these wings. But both the sides legs as well as this wings will be there. Have you got? Okay. So here, so one pair, the one pair which is icing from this mesothorax is known as, as elytra or tegmina. Elytra or tegmina. Right? Okay. And the function of these wings is, it is used for protect, protection of this body when this animal is at rest. So when the animal is at rest, so this wing, the second wing as well as this animal body will be protected by this uh, wings known as, as elytra or tegmina, right. And the second wing is arising from the metathoracic region and this uh, metathoracic, uh, this wings is used for flight. Have we got? So this is this uh, the region which is arising from this thoracic region. So head region we said first of all and the second part is thoracic region, right. And the next region is, the body division is this, abdominal, abdominal region, right? So this abdominal region for male and female, this abdominal region consists of total 10 segments, total 10 segments. So from here onwards we can say 1, 2, 3, 10 segments will be there for this both male and female, right? So, 10 segments will be there. But this, you know, you know, or organs which is present inside this segment is not similar for both male and female, right? So, or the segment is number is same, but this organs which is present inside is not same. That is, that we could see in this uh, differentiation between this male and female, right? And here, one more part we have to say, the total body is covered by this chitinous exoskeleton. Chitinous exoskeleton. Chitinous exoskeleton. So chitinous exoskeleton is there, right? And so this exoskeleton is how each segment on each segment, this exoskeleton is covered with one hard plate. Hard plate. That plate is called sclerites. Sclerites. Have you got? On each segment, so this exoskeleton is covered with one hard plate that is called sclerites. Have you got? And the sclerites which is present on the dorsal view. What do you mean dorsal view? This is the dorsal view, this is the ventral view. If you take one cockroach here, this is the dorsal view, this is the ventral view. Understand? So the dorsal view I have drawn here, right? So the sclerites which is present on the dorsal region is known as, as tergum. Tergum. The same sclerite which is present in the opposite direction. I mean in this ventral region. Have you got in the ventral region? But I mentioned here, but it is present in the ventral region. Do you understand? So the ventral region is called sternum. Okay. And so the lateral sides, the sides, the lateral sides of this, you know, sclerite is known as this pleura, pleurite. So terga, sternum and pleurite. These three plates are there. Again they say, so one segment is connected with another one segment. I mean this all this tergum, uh, tergum, sternum and pleurites is linked with or connected with each other by this, you know, in the muscle. So in between this one mus muscle is there or membrane is there. So this membrane in the corner, that membrane is only connecting the segments each other. Okay. So that membrane is known as articular membrane, articular membrane. Understand? So that's all about this. You know, morphological features, but I have to say one more thing here, listen. And the tenth segment consists of it is only present for and only for male. So the tenth segment consists of anal cerci, anal cerci, but it is present only for male. But to look at this, I have drawn here. Okay. And now let us see about this the differences between this male and female cockroach. Do you understand? There we can say about this. So what are these organs? Difference will be there in this abdominal region also. Have we got? Okay. So let us see this difference between this male and female cockroach, right? So listen, so we were discussing about this, you know, so we were discussing about this, this abdominal region, right? I'm sorry, this is actually not anal cerci, this is anal style. This is anal style, fine, okay. So this is present only for male, then not for female. So. 
and reason. So we were discussing about this abdominal region, right? So in what is this difference? Actually, I said abdominal region consists of 10 segments for both male and female. But this up, up the regions which is present inside, there is a differences will be there, right? Let us see the, what are the differences there. So listen the first one. So the seventh segment. So seventh segment, male seventh segment and the female is there. So the male seventh segment consists of apical lobes or gynovalvular plates. In the seventh segment, for male, it consists of apical lobes or it is known as gynovalvular plates, right? Okay, but this is absent for female. Right and but in this seventh female seventh segment for female there is it it is board shape like it's like board shape seventh segment alone this it is both board shape right and we can come to the next segments here and here especially they said on the ninth and the tenth segments so the ninth and tenth segment is fused and here they said gen this consists of genital pouch so the ninth and tenth segment consists of the genital pouch. And here they said 8th and 9th consist of this genital pouch. Right? So you have this 8th and 9th segment consist of this genital pouch. Then, and here the 9th segment consists of this anal style. So here 9th segment consists of anal style also. And so here we said it's an anal style but it is absent for this female. Right? Okay. Then the 10th segment. The 10th segment they say anus is present in the dorsal side. So dorsal side anus is there. Meanwhile, ventral side, you know, male genital pore is there. Male genital pore. So is that? So seventh segment apical lobe, so gynovalvular plate is there, and ninth and tenth genital pouch is there. Then ninth segment anal style is there. Tenth segment anus is there, as well as the genital pore also there. Anus is present in the dorsal side. Genital pore is present in the ventral side. Have we got? Okay. Then we can come here. So here we said in the 8th and 9th segment consist of this genital pouch. So this genital pouch consists of what are the things? So listen, in this anterior region, anterior region of this genital pouch consists of female gonophore. So female gonophore and spermatical pore is there. Spermatical pore is there. Then collateral glands. So collateral gland. So these three is present in the anterior side. And meanwhile, the posterior region consists of uthical chamber. Uthical chamber. So from this only cocoon is to arise. So all those things which involve in this reproduction process that we can discuss clearly during this reproduction part. Right. So these are the regions which is mainly using for reproduction region. Right. Other than this, what are this externally? Uh, what are this differences will be there for this male and female? So let us see. So the abdominal region. So this abdominal region is narrow for male, but it is broad for female. Okay, external. Then, anal style, that already we said, anal style is present for male, but it is absent for female. Then, and they said it's antenna. So, this antenna is longer for male and it is shorter for female. Right. And the next one, the wings. So, the wings of this male is extending beyond this abdominal region. But here, they said for, male, for female, for male, it is going beyond this abdominal region. Beyond the abdominal region, but for female, it is un until this abdominal region, the wings will extend, right? So, this is the external differences we could say. With this, we can easily differentiate this male and female. But this is internal structure is present in this, especially in this abdominal region. So, this way also it will differentiate this male and female, you know, cockroaches. Okay, so that's all about this morphology. And then we can go for this anatomical part. Have you got fat? So let us move to the anatomical part. So in the anatomical part, first we can look into this digestive system of this cockroach, right? Mm -hmm. So the digestive system is very simple. So the digestive system consists of this long alimentary canal and it starts from this mouth and it ends with this rectum and stretch, right? Okay, so lizard. So it consists of a long alimentary canal. So the first, this alimentary, the entire alimentary canal is divided as three divisions, right? So the first division is called foregut and the second division is called midgut and the third division is called hindgut. Foregut, midgut and hindgut. Okay. So let us see what are the regions comes belongs to the each varieties. Right. So the first one is the foregut. So the foregut consists of first itself buccal cavity region. So what do you mean buccal cavity? The so buccal cavity means you know oral cavity will be there and this uh, you know buccal region will be there and it leads to pharynx so all those together and we can say as this you know mouth region. So 
So this forehead consists of mouth part. Okay, and the mouth is leading as this, you know, esophagus. The next part is called as this esophagus. Understand? Okay. So esophagus is leading in a large bag-like structure or pouch-like structure that is known as a crop. This is called as crop. So the function of this crop is it is using to store the food items. So the food items will be stored in this crop region, not digested, stored there. Afterwards, they said it consists of. So this crop is leading to the next part called giza, right? Giza. So this is this, and the innermost region of this giza consists of this some chitinous plates. Some chitinous plates will be there. So that is considered as a teeth. Right, so this part is already we have seen the same part in the cerebellum also, right? So this part is responsible for the grinding of this food, right? So this food will be grinded very well in this gizzard region, right? And after uh, the gizzard is leading to the next region, that is called as as you know hepatic CK or enteric CK. This is just a six finger-like projections. So just blind tubules or finger-like projection is there after this gizzard. Right. Okay. Then this gizzard is so. That's all about this foregut region. Okay. Foregut region consists of and in the mouth part and esophagus crop across crop as well as this gizzard region. Okay. And the next region is this midgut region. So the midgut is consist of this. You know, and the mantuicin gibbous. So the midgut region. They said it is one of the glandular type, the secretory type. Secretions will be there in this region. So this is the midgut region. At the end of this midgut region, it consists of this some tubules that is called as this malpigian tubules, right? Some processes there. That processes are known as this malpigian tubules. So this is useful to you know extract this waste from this you know hemo hemo lymph. So the the blood which is present inside that is called hemo lymph. So this malpigian tubule is collecting or extracting this waste from this hemo lymph region, right? That's the use of this malpigian tubules. So that is about this midgut region. Okay, so midgut region starts from here and ends with this malpigian tubules. And third division is called hindgut region. So the hindgut consists of these three divisions again. So the hindgut part is somewhat you know broader than this uh, midgut region. So this is one of the broader region. And this also divided into three divisions. The beginning part where it is connected here. So this connection, the beginning part is called as ilia, and the central region is known as the colon. And the end region is known as as recta. Okay, so this is the three divisions of this hindgut region. Okay, so and uh, one more thing we have to say here about this uh, glands. So the glands which is involved here is actually salivary glands. Salivary gland is there, and here this midgut region also glandular cells are there. There is secreting some substances, and this hepatic CK. So this region. So this also secreting this uh, substances. So these are all these things is useful for this. You know. And digestion of these four substances. Okay, so that's all about this digestive system of this cockroach. Right? So let us move to the next system. It is a respiratory system, right? Okay. So the respiratory system is very actually they said it is little you know developed there compared with all other insects. They said so the respiratory system consists of lizard. So this uh, in our respiratory system consists of this external nostrils and it leads to this trachea. And this bronch, and you know, uh, bronchi will be there, and it is enclosed with the lungs, right? This is our respiratory system. And here they say this consists of the first they said it consists of this tracheal tubules, right? So it consists of tracheal tubules. So these tracheal tubules is open in this uh, opening called after in, in the trachea will open outside through the opening a uh, hole that is called as spiracle or stigmata. So listen. So listen, there are ten stigmata or spiracles there. Ten stigmata or spiracles there that is located from this. So already we said thoracic region consists of three segments and the abdominal region consists of ten segment, right? So the so here they say so this ten spiracle is present in this thoracic region two is there. So the first segment is left, right? So in the thoracic region two spiracle. So that's why they said the T one and T two. Have we got and Among these ten abdominal regions, so eight is there. Eight or eight segments, this spiracle is there. So abdominal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So overall ten, ten spiracle is there, right? So this is a hole which is communicating outside, right? So this spiracle is communicated again. This spiracle is connected with the tube that is called as well as as a trachea. 
So this is a spiracle, spiracle and the spiracle is connected with the tube is called trachea, right? And the trachea is again connected to this, you know, so this, this is a tracheal tube and this side also the same is a spiracle and this trachea is a tracheal tube is there and these two side again it is connected with this some branches of this trachea, the tracheal branches will be there. So this is a tracheal branch, it is connecting in both the sides. So those branches are called as tracheoles, tracheole, right? So this is connecting in each other regions, right? And they said, and um, this spiracle, the spiracle will be closed and open with the help of this wall and the wall is guarded by the muscle that is called as spincher or spiracular muscle. So this spiracle can close and open with the help of this wall and the wall is guarded or made with this muscle that is called spincher or spiracular muscle. Right. So when it's open, listen, when this spiracle is open, the air will move inside. So inside this trachea, trachea they say it is filled with the fluid. So those through this fluid, the oxygen will be supplied. So here the trachea fully will be there throughout the body. So through these structures, the oxygen will be diffused and it is supplied throughout this body. So do, by this process, this you know, respiration is going on for cockroach. So that's all about this respiratory system. The respiratory system is symbol is that spiracle is there communicating outside, connected with the trachea and the trachea is branching as a tracheo. Right, it is filled with this trachea fluid inside and through this fluid, this oxygen will be diffuses to the throughout this body. Right, that's all about this respiratory system. Let us go to the next system. Fine. So let us go for the next system. It is circulatory system, right? Okay. So circulatory system here already we have said there is a two types of circulatory system. That is open type circulatory system as well as the closed to type circulatory system, right? So in case of this cockroach, it has this open type of circulatory system. So what do you mean open type circulatory system? So there is a heart will be there, but blood vessels are poorly developed. So that is this you know open type circulatory system, right? Okay. And let us see the you know, circulatory system. So the circulatory system, so here they said, and the body cavity, the body cavity, since it is open type, the body cavity is called, the body cavity is known as hemo, hemocene. So this hemocene is filled with the blood. The blood is known as here as hemolymph. So the blood is known as us. Hemolymph, right? Okay. So, lizard. So, the cavity is known as the body cavity is known as a chemoseal, and this cavity is fully freely filled with. Since there is no blood vessels, the body cavity is fully filled with the freely filled with the you know blood that is known as as hemolymph, right? Hemolymph, and this hemolymph consists of this plasma as well as hemocyte, hemocytes. So, this consists of plasma as well as hemocytes, hemocytes, right. So the hemocyte, uh, they said it's a hemocyte, actually it consists of the cells called, I know, macrophage, macrophage cells, it consists of this, I know, macrophage cells, uh, macrophages means we can say it's a phagocytic cells, Phago, uh, phagocytic type cells is there, and um, since there is no RPC, it consists of, there is no color of this blood. So that's why this colorless blood is there, since there is no RPC set. Understand? Okay. So let's that. And uh, so let's so let's that. So the body cavity is known as a hemocene. And the hemocene is filled with the fluid hemo, you know, hemolymph. So the hemolymph consists of this plasma as well as this cell. It's this hemocyte. Right. And here the cell is a phagocytic cell. So there is no RPC cells. So there is no uh, color to this blood. Right? Okay. So let us see about this heart. So the heart they said it is present in this thoracic region. And the heart is present in the thoracic region. And it consists of 13 chambers. So overall 13 segment is there. So each segment consists of one chamber. So there is totally 13 chambers are there. Chambers of the heart. So overall 13 chambers is there. So each chamber, each segment consists of one chamber, right? Okay. So it is connected each other. Understand? Okay. Then we can say, and this chamber is, so for example, is that this is one chamber. This is one chamber. 
and the next chamber is open here. Do you understand? So this is one chamber and this is another one chamber, heart of this chamber. So this open, this open is called as, as you know, ostia. So this opening only called as ostia. So this I mentioned here. Right? So every chamber there is a hole that is called as ostia. Understand? So this is the, so the, through this ostia only the blood used to move inside. Okay. And this, and so this part, the cavity we can say as a sinus also. So the cavity is known as a sinus also. Sinus. Understand? And then one more region they said, and uh, this in every segment, along with this every chamber, it consists of what? Muscle. That is known as, as allery muscles. Allery muscles. Right? So by the contraction of these muscles also, you know, this blood circulation is going on. Have you got? Okay. So listen. So when this ostia opens, the blood is moving from the sinus. So the word they mention as a sinus means from this cavity, the blood is moving inside. And when it contracts again, so the blood is lizard. When, when it's open from the sinus to, it is moving from posterior to anterior direction. So this is posterior, this is anterior region, this is posterior region. So usually the blood is to move from there to anterior to posterior, right? But here they say the blood is moving through the sinus, it is moving to posterior to anterior direction, upward direction. Do you understand? So through this opening, so this is the cavity. From the cavity, the hemocele is moving inside. And through this hole, so it is moving in uh, upward direction, posterior to anterior direction. Have you got? So that's all about this circulatory system. Do you understand? Okay. And so, so today we can complete uh, until we, with this topic. And the rest of this topic, uh, and anatomical regions, we can see in this next class. Until that, you go through these classes. Fine? Okay. Thank you.